up to this point, we've learned uh, about a variety of electrical quantities. And in this video, what I want to do is summarize the main ideas of what those quantities represent and also um, kind of organize them in a particular way um, to help make them easier to understand. And in order to do that, I'm going to look specifically at the case of point charges. So point charges are just really small charges. Um, they're essentially the little pluses and minuses that we've been drawing in order to understand how charges behave. And we started out with the expression for the force. Okay, so the magnitude of the force on a point charge, which I'll put absolute value symbols around to indicate that we're just talking about the magnitude, was equal to K times Q1 magnitude times Q2 magnitude over R squared. Okay, this was Coulomb's law. This was where we started from. And from this expression, we found it to be useful to define the electric field. So dealing with two charges at once was kind of a pain and it turned out that um, it was a useful idea to think of the electric field. And again, I'll just draw the magnitudes as being equal to K times just one charge now. So we don't have to worry about both. If you wanted to be specific, this is the um, active charge rather than the passive charge in this relationship divided by R squared. Okay, so these are the two vector quantities that we have looked at. And vectors are good because they're um, sort of a relatively um, straightforward, conceptual way to think about things. And we can solve all the problems about how, uh, um, how materials are going to interact based on the forces that are on those materials. Okay. Um, but then we found it also to be useful to think about scalars because those are easier to work with um, mathematically. We don't have to split them into components and do all of that stuff. So in terms of scalar quantities, we started out with energy. So the electrical energy is equal to K times Q1 times Q2 over R. <clears throat> no R squared this time. Um, but we still have two charges involved. Okay, and this time we didn't want the absolute values, but that's okay. We're just going to get a positive or a negative number. Okay, so in this table that I am constructing, over here I'm going to call this line, the one that includes forces and um, energy, this is going to be the two particle or two charge interactions. <clears throat> so these two particle interactions are sort of the basic real quantities that we tend to think of as actually existing. Um, and the other quantities are ones that we derive from those to make the math a little bit easier. Okay, so to complete this table, um, by analogy with the way we defined electric field from forces, we defined electric potential from the energy. So the electric potential for a point charge now, well, I take U and divide it by the passive charge. So I just get K Q over R. And <coughs> um, this then completes the table. Okay, so what is going on with this second row? How can I characterize electric field and electric potential? What is it those things have in common? And really what it is, um, is that we can look at these one charge at a time. That's how we justified constructing these quantities in the first place. Um, and really what these two um, quantities are describing is the effect surrounding the charge, the way that those charges are interacting with each other, this sort of disturbance in space that 
um, carries the um, capacity for the charges to talk to each other. Okay, so these are the one charge, um, and I'll call these um, maybe the disturbances around them. All right, so if you know the electric field and you place a charge somewhere in the electric field, you can figure out what force will be on that electric charge. If you know any electric potential and you place a charge somewhere in that potential, then you'll know what potential energy that charge has. <clears throat> okay, so um, to kind of connect these things, we know some relationships between these quantities. Let me use a different color here. So, um, between the force and the electric field, we have the relationship that F equals QE. Okay, so that connects these two. And between, uh, between U and V, we have a very similar relationship we have U equals QV. Okay, and the relationship between force and energy, if you think back to essentially 114, we had a relationship between force and work, which was that work equals F D cosine theta. And there was a relationship between work and potential energy that work equals minus the change in potential energy. So working between these things, and it's a little more complicated than directly applying this, but this gives you essentially the right idea that if I multiply this force by a distance, then I get something that looks like this energy. Um, and we haven't actually found this last relationship. So the electric field and the potential, it turns out, are related to each other, but we haven't actually discussed that yet, and that will come up in an upcoming video.